I'd like to start this video by thanking Odin Lake for sending me their 747 Max, which definitely doesn't make me sound fat, um, chair, which you could hear more about at the very end of this video. So check out the end of the video for more about the 747 Max. And now, the RSL. I would love to play the rest of the Tenet soundtrack for you here on YouTube, but lawyers exist, and frankly, I like Christopher Nolan a lot, and we're good friends, and Ludwig Gorens, and ah, Hello! Welcome to Z-Reviews, and welcome to a 2.1 system. $660, which is a lot. $660, but all the other, like, pre-made 2.1 systems I've done have been like, like, there was a Swan one that was a little cute little thing, and then there was an Edifier one that was a cute little thing, and this one's by RSL, or Rogers Sound Labs, and it's kind of a cute little thing, and then they throw a full, nearly $500 on its own 10-inch subwoofer in with it, which which I'm using a little feel box, which can just... That's... <laughs> so, RSL is known for their speed woofer, and they have a 10 and a 12, and as of this moment, they're kind of low in stock. Um, but they're like, you know what? We should probably sell the speed woofer. We could have... It's beautiful. It's imagine like SVS decided to make speakers, right? To go along with their subwoofers because they're known for their subwoofers. Now their speakers are like ascending to this height. Well, RSL's taking it a little bit different. Like, well, what if we sell, yes, they sell speakers. And these are correct bottom tweeter, front port. So perfect for like the near field desk. Welcome back to the near field desk, by the way. Decorated with black ice audio and cowboy bebop vinyls. Oh, I want to... Mention a sponsor of today's video, even though it's not really a sponsor, but you could check it out in case the sale's still going on. BioBidet. There's a whole Amazon thing where they help, I'm gonna help promote BioBidet. So link in the description to bidets because you know what? Life just ain't worth living unless there's warm water being pushed up your ass like two or three times a day. Back to the speakers. Um, I tried these in the actual speaker testing arena and they didn't quite have it. Like they can produce sound big enough. I tried them on their own. First of all, I tried them on their own on different amplifiers, not this. Cause this is the setup. It's 10 inch speed woofer. It's the IA255.1, which is a fucking name for their 2.1 amplifier, which is specifically theirs. And then the speakers, which, hold on, let me get the actual model number of the speakers themselves, are the CG3Ms. Doesn't roll off the tongue. I like when people name their things. These should be like the Mockingbirds. And this should be the Taurus. But no, we've got the RSL Speedwoofer 10S Mark II, which available in white or black. The 2.1 together setup, I don't... It does allow you to get a 12. It becomes a thousand dollars if you get a 12. <laughs> it's not really like small, but um, you get the 10 and it's only, uh, I can't switch back because it's out of stock. So I gotta hit back. And that's not it either. Okay, we're fine. Oh, there it is, 659. So yeah, if you were to buy the amplifier, all they kept asking me when they were sending this to me is like, check out the amplifier, check out the amplifier. So about midway into this review, I'm going to stop and swap to different speakers on this amplifier with their subwoofer, or maybe different speakers on their amplifier, and maybe that sub if I can get cables long enough to make the big fucking HSE research go. The point being, this is what they're proud of. This is their new thing. The ultra compact integrated amplifier which does all the things that they need the thing to do. This makes RSL not just a place to go to buy a subwoofer or to buy speakers, but to buy a system. Does SVS sell an amp? You like my lighting solution? I don't know if SVS sells a direct amp. So let's look at this, the heart of the 2.1. Um, I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna stop. Hold on, I'm gonna play the music for six seconds. Oh, okay, now we're gonna stop, turn it off which since I have it plugged into my computer, this is, there's my computer that I do my video encoding and up in my office, and it's got a secondary system here. It's like the 80s, I've got a um, a console and a, what was it? It was, you used to have a, like the master server and everyone would console into it. You had one computer. 
boom. So, little tiny thing. And it's a little tiny thing made in China for RSL. And they've got, the front is power on and off. Now, this system here is my secondary system. So my main place that I sit in my office is up there. It's got the 40 inch screen. It's got the iLoud MTMs. I use the Motu M2 to control that plus an SVS subwoofer. That's my like office. But when I'm down here, um, I turn the screen on and it's like, all right, I want this to become, I could cancel on this alone. I want this to become my desk. Now make this my office. So having the power on and off and using USB, which is what I'm doing there, USB-C, means that when I flip this switch, my computer will automatically default to this. I made this a default device. But when I'm ready to leave this desk and go back upstairs, I flip off that and it defaults and reverts back to the M2, which is so fucking cool. It's like, I'm here, click, USB comes on. This is now my audio source. I'm done here, click, and then it goes back upstairs. In fact, if I am playing music and then shut this off, I will actually hear the sound transfer upstairs and I'm like, oh shit, so it's gonna scare the hell out of people. All right, so you get your power switch, you get a little LED. I think it's white. Is it white? Tell me it's not blue. Hold on. It's a plug. We're gonna check this. I, I, I am blanking on the color. It is white. Thank God. Immediate purchase. Um, you get your choice of input of USB Bluetooth, because it does have a Bluetooth antenna if you wanted that to be your thing. Which would be a would be wild if you just bought this setup and like hid it somewhere in your kitchen and hooked it up to your like Alexa and be like Alexa play music and it just fucking slams, and then your line input. So this actually does have, and this is a rare occurrence. You don't see this on a lot of the SM seller topping stuff. That is, first of all, one hundred and ten dollars. I think they're selling themselves short in the cost of this because it could be so much more comparatively with the features. So we got power. You got Bluetooth, USB, and line, which I was gonna hook up the Black Ice Aries as the line input and give some tube fuckery to this, but I didn't do that. So, and then you have a bass knob and a treble knob, which the bass knob does affect both the speakers and the sub. They're not separated out. So if you adjust the sub, because there is obviously full adjustments on the sub, we'll look at that in a second, you will be then tuning everything. So it's like, oh, the baby's asleep, turn the bass down. Oh, it's time for the baby's feeding. Turn the bass way up, and then you do that. Treble is, you know, obviously, I'm sitting at a desk. I have the treble flat, but if you're finding it's too bright for whatever reason, because these speakers are pretty fucking amazing, you could do that. And then your volume knob here, which I do have to talk about the volume knob. I find that this, and I'm gonna, this is gonna be interesting when I swap out speakers, which I'll do again in a bit. This volume knob goes from, what is that, seven o'clock? to about nine o'clock. And if you go to 10 o'clock, you're blasting it. And that's on the USB input. So the, the speakers that this is designed for and the sub is designed for, I never hit noon. So it's it's very front loaded. So you get like blasting. And I don't even know what would happen here. Probably end my life or other people's lives. Listen to how quiet my Pioneer Mini Split is, by the way. It's on mute fan mode. That's a 36,000 BTU. Zeos, link to that in the description as well. Let's let this video be sponsored by Pioneer and Bidets. Mini splits and bidets in it together. Um, the back of the unit, Bluetooth antenna, USB-C, a reset button, a uh, bypass for the line input. I'm sorry, there's a line there and I'm not sure if that means they're connected, but we have a bypass or 90 Hertz cutoff for the speakers. Uh, I had it set to 90 hertz cutoff because those, those frequencies should be sent to this since I'm using it in such an area. If you wanted to bypass and have full range go to the speakers, you could flip that switch and there you go. You then get your line inputs. I don't know why there's a line drawn between these two. Like it's only for that, but yet it still works for the USB. Maybe you just didn't want to draw it for the USB. I don't know. Uh, your left and right are here. You do get a stereo output. Now this is the sub slash pre output, which they include, hold on, this adapter, which is just RCA females and a 3.5 millimeter 
stereo. So now this subwoofer comes, doesn't come with RCA cables, by the way. So you gotta provide your own. I'm using these SKW ones that I, I rarely use in anything because they're so damn stiff. Like I could cut a tree down with the plastic wrapping on this. But we're going to the sub. So you get your 3.5 millimeter. So it doesn't sum to mono, but I think if I used just one of these, if you had a sub that only had one RCA input, that would still work. It would just possibly be preamping only one channel. I wish there was a mono button to make it mono. And then you have your five way binding posts, which say four to eight ohms, and they're labeled left and right. And there's your 24 volt input. The power brick is back here. It is, hold on, an RSL labeled power brick, uh, 2.1 amps. How the, f oh, I'm sorry, seven amps. The input was 2.1, the output is 24 volts at seven amps. So let's plug this all back in the way I like it. You know how I like it. Um, USB here. Uh, I forget which speakers are which, but it won't matter because you can't tell through a GoPro if I have them wired backwards as long as they're working. These are the things that happen inside my brain usually, but it's coming out today. Give our little power plug a plug. Sort my wire out like a poor person. Flip that on, give it a second. Should be working, hit play. Nothing happens on my little Fio thing. Hold on, wait, let me click, click the window. Play, next track. It, ah. All the volume's all the way down. Oh, it's switched to literally not, ah, here it goes. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. This is America and this is Windows, so you know, it's not as great as it could have been, but it is still my thing. I have nothing but Tenet playing, and I, because that's, you can't knock Ludwig for the bass choices he made in that soundtrack. If you've seen the, the movie Tenet, or you haven't, because you're afraid it's gonna sound like shit, you can't understand anybody, there's a great video by, by Willems there that basically explains how Tenet is a feels movie. You're not supposed to understand the plot. It's weird. And I'm gonna go off on a slight tangent, even though I'm reviewing these speakers and amp, but you're here for me, I think. But it's weird, but you're supposed to watch Tenet and not understand it, at least the first time. You're just supposed to like enjoy the accent and action and the feel and the confusion of the main character because shit moves backwards in time and then the soundtrack kicks on and it's like, oh, Jesus God, did I set this to, um? yeah, I had it set to bypass and I could tell. These were trying to do Ludwig Goranson bass, and they should not. So set that to 90, so it goes down to that. Holy fuck. Okay. I don't think you're gonna find a better desktop sound solution for $660. That said, you could easily just buy this for 110, because Again, very few amplifiers have a dedicated subwoofer out slash preamp out, but you could buy this and use it with your current speakers. Let's talk about these speakers before I swap them out, because the sub's going to probably stay. The sub has just, it's the XDR400W. Wait a second, is that the XDR400W? Is that the same sub that they're talking about over here? Hold on. We're clicking a button again. Choose your subwoofer. No, it says 10S Mark II. So even though that says 10X Mark II, that is also the XGR400W. I guess it's a, the, the back plate is that, which by the way, speaker inputs. You know what? All right, let's talk about the speakers for a second and their capabilities. And then we'll talk about the sub after I swap the speakers. So these little guys are exactly that. Which one can I pick up? They're just little guys. Look, they've got both a quarter inch mount in case you wanted to get the wall mounts that are just a quarter 20. They've got a standard hanging bracket and since there's no rear port you could wire them. Uh, I wouldn't use bananas obviously you just use raw wire in here. So you could wall mount these almost basically. Uh, I don't recommend it. They are not very deep. They're actually pretty square like RB42s. Where's my RB42s? <laughs> which are not the speakers I'm gonna to switch to. Ignore this, I need to stop that TV stand from vibrating because it's hollow when I'm like, I'm just gonna hook a tube up to my great stuff machine and fill the tubes with great stuff. 
Anyway, like RB42s would be the speakers I'd recommend. You know what? I do have to sort of test them because I want to know if this can push these. Because this claims 55 watts, which is not the be all end all, but it's so powerful. It says true 55 watt per channel. Does it say THD? Let me see if it says THD. Oh yeah, 0.006% at 10 watts, which is fine. And then it's gonna get more distortion as it goes up. But the depth of the speaker, if you're looking to compare directly, there are covers for these speakers, by the way, in case you're a boring, terrible person. There's just a black, it's just black. It doesn't say RSL in it. It's very, very no frills. It just sort of exists. There's the depth, by the way, in case you want to check depth. You're losing at least two inches versus this thing. Ugh. I will check with the micros. Give me a second. You get your front firing, top loaded, four inch. You get your big, soft, silky, smooth silk dome. And if I go to the picture for the thing, there's a cool animation. Where is it? Uh, here's why the port Here's why the, the woofer's on top, because they're using an angled piece inside of it to direct the sound back and then down to the ported area. So they're actually killing a resonance inside of it and then the port's underneath it instead of just bouncing all around and coming through a port. So interesting. And whether I can hear that particular design frequency, doesn't matter. It's fucking great. They sound at least as good as they need to for this job. I mean, I, if I would have had speakers on their own and nothing, I'd take RB42s over these. But as far as giving you that huge, that is a silk soft dome designed for a much larger speaker, which if I go to find, I gotta see if actually the marching band I could put on, That's, I own that, yeah. I recorded this in my old town, so no one owns the copyright but me or those people playing bagpipes. There's noon, by the way. That is quite loud. Ah, okay. Anything past noon is just instant death. Imaging. They only have to concern themselves, see, with once your 90 hertz is cut off, they only have to concern themselves with vocal clarity and instrument representation. They don't have to get that deep bass, so they can be tight and responsive. And that, like, I can hear the guy with the drum, and, that, and that's not even pointing. Like, here's the thing. This subwoofer is just here on a rolling cart because that's where I could fit it. This isn't even the right spot. I haven't done the sub crawl for this area yet, by the way. So what I'll probably end up doing is putting this up on a stack of boxes and then doing the sub crawl around this area and hopefully somewhere around this area I'll find the right spot for it. But right fucking now, this subwoofer is so big and so mean that it doesn't care. It's just like, oh, you need bass. Hold on, let me just infect the entire area with bass. <laughs> Yeah, now these, I would almost say they're like mini studio monitors because they don't have a lot of like added flavor to the sound. They just present the sound. It's like, here you go. You're good, you're good to go, buddy. Here you go. So, like that whistle, like it's never, it's never harsh. There's not a harshness to this. Like I would almost expect with a cheaper 2.1 but they do their fucking job super admirably. By the way, I do want to say, if you take the covers off, number one, oh, this cover has to go like this. You take the covers off, you are treated to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 screws and or holes, which might take away from the looks. Uh, the next revision of these speakers, I'd love to see magnetic grills, and maybe something just to hide that, just, just clean up that look. But we're talking about a budget here. These speakers are only like a hundred, under $200 for the pair. So let's swap out the speakers now to something a little more grandiose. And we'll, we'll see how the RSL Labs amp holds up for that. And then we'll talk some more. All right, I didn't switch to the big ones yet because I had to know RB42s. Bypass the sub, turn the sub down. So I'm testing just the amplifier 
on RB42s. And we have got um, a pretty fucking substantial sound. I can get it to distort. I'm currently at 1230 on the knob. And I've got the treble turned down just a touch and the bass turned up just a touch. So I'm just tweaking the EQ on this a little bit. But um, that that's, that's running RB42s. So straight up, forget everything, forget everything I said up to this point. If you have RB42s already and you're looking for an amp, IA255i, I'm gonna hate remembering that name. I can't just. Uh. We're playing loud enough now that I don't know if I could even hear the distortion. Prodigy, by the way. Yeah, so uh, I'm giving a full thumbs up for this being able to power those because it seems like it's it's either lying about that 255 or it's just got so much gain behind it that it could just run everything. Why am I not in shuffle? I'm gonna put this in shuffle, hold on. I'm gonna bang this bitch the fuck out! All right, moving on. I'd love to play more of the Tron soundtrack. By the way, do you know they're making another Tron? Tron, but the, the O is a three, and Jared fucking Leto's in it? Why? Why? He's like He was only good in 2049 because he played a asshole with a god complex for like four minutes stop putting him in movies that matter like the tron continuation fuck <clears throat> okay so i've switched to how do i put this a speaker that's probably gonna live here now because jbl studio 530s if you go way back, way, way back in the channel, <clears throat> it was the first video I ever put real effort into. I, I played an R. Kelly song at the beginning where the speaker did nasty things to your wallet to an R. Kelly song. Just, just putting that out to you if you wanted to check out the Studio 530 JBL speaker trailer. So... RB42s work. I just showed you RB42s working, and I did them without the sub. And then this, if I flip off the, if I put the bypass on for the 90 hertz, these work, and actually at lower volume settings than the RB42s, so you know you're keeping it lower than the, where the distortion's probably gonna happen. And then I integrated the sub back in by just turning that knob randomly. That's the nice thing about having a sub that's an actual sub. Most 2.1s, like I was talking about the Swans and the Edifiers, you get a sub, but it's sort of like specifically designed for the setup you're in. RSL's like, nah, man, we make a fuck good sub. Let's just make a thing that sends a signal and you deal with it. So you get to deal with your treble and bass here. The bass does affect that. The treble's not gonna affect that. But I got the treble down just a little bit, as that is a lot. There's a lot of horn, very horny in front of me. And then I'm leaving the bass straight because I'm doing the 90 hertz cutoff. So these are not getting anything below 90 hertz. And then I'm just integrating this and I'm actually gonna lower that a little bit. And we've got our full phase and our, our everything. We, everything's nice and set. We'll get back down to the sub in a second. Um, Love was the egg. See? And it was so this amp for $110 can cleanly push Studio 530s. So that's RB42s and Studio 530s. I probably should have hooked up different speakers as Sam weeks and weeks ago when I got it. Because I love the speakers it comes with. They're absolutely perfectly fine. They're not Studio 530s and not RB42s. But if you're just getting the whole system, absolutely fine with the RSL speakers the CNGX 38294s, whatever their model number is. I'll link everything individually in the description. But hooking up better, better, harder to drive, things that shouldn't be on a desk. Fuck you, these belong here. This, this is where this amplifier starts to impress me. Because it's, it's that 0.006% total harmonic distortion, 10 watts is plenty. We're here. We're this far from this. You don't have to be like, well, it's a 55 watt amp, Zeos, and you're only getting clean up to 10 watts, and probably by 2025, it's reduced to 0. 0.6, 0. 
distortion under a percent at half volt. I'm just guessing, by the way. But the point is, if you're using it in a near field, which is what I think most of you would probably be using it for, you're not going to push much past 10 or you'll die. So they've worked it out with their speakers. I checked RB42s and you could pull it off, although you will distort. I can't turn this volume up high enough to make these hear the distortion of the amp or I will literally blow out my eardrums. And then we flipped this 90 hertz switch. We push it down to the sub. Let's look at the sub now. Right, let's Violet Evergarden. Dragon Age Inquisition. Oh, all right, sub. Sub time. Once again, thank you for Odin Lake for sending out this lovely chair. Stay tuned to the end of the video to see the review of the chair. Um, it does have a cover. It's just off. It's sitting there. There's this permanent plastic uh, Speedwoofer logo, so you know who you're dealing with. I wish it wasn't shiny plastic, but you got to live with it. You get your RSL branded, beautiful, like thick, stiff surround. It's probably terrible lighting, but there you go. Your front of your woofer just looks, it looks the business, all right? That's all you gotta worry about is it's the business. So let's look at the back of it now, which is probably gonna require me unplugging the power because I'm using the power I was using for studio monitors and they were real short. We have got power plug, a 110 to 220 switch, which is protected with plastic, your master power on off. You have a ground screw in case you need that for some reason. You do get speaker level inputs. Because again, this subwoofer is not designed for this 2.1. It's a legit, on its own, fuck you subwoofer. So you can watch my video on how to integrate a subwoofer into a system, and then you could just add this to most of them. So underneath these RCAs, which I will gently pull out, one of the problems with these SKW cables, they have these really aggressive heads, and I've yanked RCAs out of things with it. So this is more for like permanent installation, not for me, which swaps plugs 200 times a fucking episode. Um, from top to bottom, you get a power LED. You get a wireless button. Push for three seconds and release to pair for something that RSL does with wireless for this. So it's built in wireless. Look on their site to get their wireless adapter so you could run this across your room. You get your volume control here. You get your crossover frequency, which you can turn all the way down until it goes click. I don't think I've ever had a subwoofer go click. What that does is it puts it in LFE mode, which disables the crossover internally. Not just set it to maximum, which on this is 200 hertz. It means you go down until you go click and then LFE mode starts. That's nice. That should be on all subwoofers. I want the Klipsch sight glasses from the top, and I want the click to go boom, LFE mode. So we don't want LFE mode because this is sending full signal down here. We want to hear voices. So we're going to click it out of there. I had it set to around 90 hertz, which is where it should be since it's cutting off those at around 90 hertz. You know, I'm going to set it to completely vertical. We'll just try that. And then you get your phase adjustment, which is a knob, which is nice because that means it's a delay when you place the sub. If it's, it's either going to go out when it makes a big boom or it's going to go in when it makes a big boom, but it can go and adjust the timing anywhere in between that. Home theater settings, you got your auto power on or off, and then you get your LFE in, which is a single RCA. You get your two left and right, the single RCA and the right channel L, uh, thing to make a line in, and then you get a line out pass through so you can come out and go to an amplifier. So again, Easy integration with a system. Easy integration with a system. It's a real subwoofer. And by the way, here's your port, which is a giant flat slot load. <laughs> your giant slot, um, which is hanging out in the back. So let's plug this stuff back in. Left and right really don't matter which way you're plugging them in, but I'm anal retentive, so I'm gonna make sure I plug them into the correct colors. Again, that doesn't matter, because it's all getting them basically mono. It's got one woofer. Let's turn this thing back around. Kick ourselves up. I love these Home Depot rolling carts. They're like $12, so I just bought as many as I could fit in my truck. Your LED is red because it's not getting signal. If we tap that, wait, oh, blue. You do get a blue LED, all right? Throw it all in the trash. At least the blue LED is hidden behind the subwoofer and isn't there on the amplifier. So now, let's sit back in our 747. 
what kind of cheer you got, 747. We sit here admiring waifus and speakers that seem too big, but if you go back and watch, these are some of the best near field speakers you can buy. The only reason they're not on my desk upstairs is because I physically didn't have the room in that weird corner spot. So now we can just... So you can integrate any subwoofer you want with this amp and it'll it'll as long as it's giving you full line you just deal with the controls and the thing it turns out i'm powering two of some of the hardest to drive passive speakers on this amp and it's pretty doing pretty fucking good now rsl also sells where's their entire line if i go to products they have they're normal speakers. They've got double speakers. So they have what is essentially an MTM with two ports. So they could sell you the entire thing as a 5.1 for surround. Bundle and save. Let's see what the bundles look like. Do they actually have receivers too? I didn't even notice this. They have receivers as well. You can get everything. You can literally, it's a one-stop shop. And I'm sad I hadn't heard of, I've heard of RSL, but I've never actually got to review something. So now with the speed woofer being the speediest of the woofers and the amplifier honestly being like the cheat code unlock for just easy 2.1 desk stuff. I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, I can't play. I can't play any music. This is YouTube. It's 2024. You can't play music on YouTube. In fact, just looking at titles, it's just like, wah. Michael Jackson will, will crawl out of the grave to sue me because I'm playing the Beatles. You know he owns? Paul McCartney or one of the one of the Beatles told Michael Jackson that they owned, that they were having, like, did you know that you can own someone else's music and license it? And so Michael Jackson, being a hee-hee, decided to just go and hee-hee and buy all the Beatles rights and then let them use them in car commercials and shit. And that's where Michael Jackson kept his fortune going. Because he didn't have to sell any albums anymore. Once you own the Beatles catalog and you could just license it out for, you know, $2 million, you could use this in a Super Bowl ad. That's how you make your money. So all the Beatles would would, would, would get uh, oh Harvest Moon by Beth Bedlam. You know this is a great system. Th this this on its own was worth the review. The speakers, which are sitting currently on the little couch over there, absolutely great to come with a 2.1. You don't need to concern yourself with an RB42 or a Studio 530s if you don't want to. You just use that. The sub, however. I think that's pretty much worth it because it's a 10 inch. So behind it right there is the Martin Logan Dynamo 400, which is an eight inch and $500. This is $50 less and bigger and probably just as fast and has way better connectivity on the back. Not saying I don't like the Martin Logan, but fuck, if you're gonna get a subble for the, for the same price, it's, slight, it's slightly bigger. You go with the 10 inch speed wolfer. So yeah, that's basically my review of the RSL 2.1 that got reduced to a just a 0.1 and then I could throw whatever the hell speakers I want. By the way, these speaker cables were handmade for me by an Australian man years and years and years ago and I used them in my old apartment and it's just nice to see like they're nice and soft and hand woven. I should make my own speaker cables too. I should have a branded speaker. A DD Hi-Fi needs to work with me on something. Maybe we'll make speaker cables together. It'd be lovely. Anyway, so that's uh, the end of this. To the dark oh God, it's so good. Yeah, I'm really surprised at how well that powers everything for such a little tiny thing. I guess it's that seven amps in the in the box that's making it kick ass and take names. Anyway, uh, let's talk about today's sponsor, Chair Burb. Yeah, Patreon subscribe, start support this channel if you want to check out videos early, uh, get access to yard sales where I sell things, um, access to 
uh, all the sound demos that have gone hidden or missing from YouTube, losslessly and new ones. Those are all available for $5 patrons. $10 patrons get to uh, enter a private behind the scenes Telegram chat where they can ask me questions directly and get into a lifetime swap me channel where they can buy, sell and trade gear. However, we're here to talk a little bit at the end of this video about the 747 Max. So I was sent this chair and it's like a thousand dollar chair. And I'm like, thank you for sending me a chair. I absolutely fucking need it because this little desk, I was using like a ball and using a ball is fine for your abs. But my abs are so ripped. I, I just couldn't go anymore. So I'm gonna quickly go over, number one, comfort in this, I'd give 95%. There is a 5% where I think it's not as comfortable as it could be, but that could be fixed by go, switching to the other model the Ergo Max, I think, because here's the only problem I have. This is, I'm gonna start with the problem because that's how you gotta do things. The edges of this are hard, like the center is a beautiful soft mesh. But if you're one of those people who sits in a chair and after like an hour, you start leaning like to one side, you're gonna get the hardness in your back. That's it, that's the flaw. Also, I would love if this could be moved in and out. Right now, the headrest has uh, up and down, there's a knob back here to unscrew it so it can move up and down. So, real quick, headrest can move up and down and tilts. The entire back of the chair has an adjustability so you can actually click it up four different notches for height. You get your lumbar adjustment here, which lets you adjust three or four different clicks for how far this cushion comes out. I've never seen this before. You lift this up and you can actually, it's moving with the chair, but you can actually slide the seat position forward and backwards. That's interesting. Uh, obviously up and down is a thing. You get your tilt, which is lockable or, wait, oh, I'm just not heavy enough. I'm not strong enough to pull it down. It does that nice leaning back thing. The armrests are like a four way where you get to obviously pull this trigger and adjust the height, but then you also get to adjust forward or backwards, twist, and then what's the other? It might just be forward, backwards, and twist. Oh my God, please. Forward, backwards, twist, and then up and down. So yeah, I think that's, what is that, a three-way? You're having a three-way? So you go up, up. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong. It is a four-way. It also adjusts this way. There you go. I've never known I've needed that sort of adjustment on armrests, but you have it. So your back, it does have pretty, I'm pretty broad in my shoulders, so this does actually fit. These are fixed in place. And the one with the adjustment down here comes out. So yeah, I could basically adjust this to fit my body perfectly. So let's adjust this all the way out, this all the way up this out and eat in eat, aiming out uh when i'm at this desk i do need to be a little bit lower though so that's this one and if we lean it back hold on there we go that's the full lean i ain't gonna get nothing done now it's too comfy so thank you to odin lake for sending out this chair i'm sure you'll see it again in other videos because Got to show some sponsorship love. Oh, it's great. By the way, mini splits are linked and also bidets. I'm just going to throw all the products in here. And thank you to RSL again. Oh, they also make a leg rest for this Odin Lake, which they didn't send me, but I might, I might be like, hey, just make it a bed at this point. You actually have to hook it up and it becomes a full, like, recliner. That's insane. That's insane. See you in the next one.